Well, good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome all of you to the Interaction of Processes and its Importance to a Successful Audit webinar. My name is Joseph Krolikowski, and I am the QMS Program Manager for Perry Johnson Registrars. Couple of notes for everyone. All of our participants today are on mute, uh, but we absolutely want to address your questions. So please utilize the question portion of the dashboard. I will address your questions at the uh, end of the presentation. One of the more common questions that we get is whether or not the presentation will be available after we're finished. Uh, there uh, are two ways that we make the presentation available. If you want to download the slides, the slides are available for download on our website at pjr.com. And if you'd like to rewatch the webinar with full voiceover, that can also be done on our YouTube page. Our topics for today, uh, we're going to have some background on why this is an important uh, topic. Uh, we're going to correlate the requirements from ISO 9001-2015 that pertain to this topic. We're going to uh, define both what is and what is not a process. And uh, we're going to review some strategies on meeting this requirement, uh, potentially with minimal changes to your existing documentation. Now, back in 2014, uh, Perry Johnson Registrars was given uh, a rather firm mandate from our accreditation bodies. We were told that we were not being uh, strict enough in our assessments of client interaction of process documents. And the basis for this is rooted in the ISO 17021 standard. This is a standard that PJR is held accountable to uh, when we get audited. Uh, now that standard includes a provision that reads as follows. An audit program for the full certification cycle shall be developed to clearly identify the audit activity or activities required to demonstrate that the client's management system fulfills the requirements for certification. Now the uh, portion of that uh, that uh, was tricky is in this business of the client's management system. Uh, we're expected to make sure that our auditors are doing their audits, performing their audits and so forth in such a way that they reflect the client's management system. Now, if the organization that we're auditing has a poorly rendered interaction of processes or a poorly rendered reflection of what their processes are, it's very difficult for the auditor uh, to structure their audit around the management system and it's doubly difficult for Perry Johnson to prepare an effective audit program. So as a result of this, uh, since 2014, our policy has been that if the interaction of processes uh, document does not do an effective job of identifying what the processes are, our auditor is to issue a nonconformance for it. Now, in terms of where the nonconformance uh, would be rooted, where the requirement would come from, uh, the clauses that are in play here are these three. Uh, to begin with, in 4.4.1, it states that the organization needs to determine the processes that are needed for the quality management system, simple enough. Uh, 441 then continues and says that the organization needs to determine the sequence and interaction of those processes. Uh, and then finally in 442, it states that the organization shall maintain documented information to support the operation of its processes. So these three kind of taken together are the basis for us demanding that you define what your processes are and you define how they interface with each other. 
Now this, of course, raises a logical question. What is a process? And for this, we turn to the official definition for process that is given in the ISO 9000 document. ISO 9000, of course, is titled Fundamentals and Vocabulary. And it reads as follows. A process is a set of interrelated or interacting activities that use inputs to deliver an intended result. Um, now the key part of that definition is in that wording, interrelated or interacting activities. Uh, now this points to a, a key aspect of what a process is not. Uh, and that is a process is not a single step. Uh, it's actually a series of activities. Uh, focused on a shared goal, kind of a, a different perspective. So in terms of, of what we typically see as process designations, uh, this list here uh, was drawn uh, from many, many uh, past uh, audit packages uh, that we've had go through our facility. And um, this was not tallied in any particular way uh, as to the most common, uh, but certainly these are the ones that we see the most often. Uh, sales and purchasing, production, shipping, design development. Uh, we see those a lot. Now it's important to remember that an interaction of processes has to reflect what you think your processes are. So if you have a very simple quality management system, and your understanding, your structure, is that that quality management system is made up of four processes, say sales, purchasing, production, support. It is absolutely acceptable for your interaction of processes to reflect as much. Now in terms of what is not a process, uh, the interaction of process documents that are gonna get rejected most often are going to be the ones that present steps within a single process. Here's an example. If we have steps like create a work order, complete the work order, package the product, um, it's conceivable that those are going to be steps within a single process. But in all likelihood, they are not processes by themselves. Um, so when we, when we see an interaction of process document that presents these types of items as full processes, uh, again, bearing in mind the definition for process from ISO 9000, uh, this idea of interrelated or interacting activities, uh, that's going to potentially get raised as a nonconformance. Um, we are also concerned with an interaction of processes a document that presents sections from the applicable standard. In other words, if you were to take ISO 9001-2015 and structure it in such a way that the sections of the standard are your processes, that's going to be regarded with some concern. Uh, after all, how many organizations actually have a process that they call resource management or production and service provision uh, or things of that nature? Um, these are the types of IOP documents that are going to be potentially uh, cited uh, within a nonconformance. Now, in terms of meeting the requirement with minimal changes to your existing documentation, um, for a lot of our clients, uh, we recognize that a lot of careful thought and consideration went into the development of the interaction of processes. Um, and we're also well aware that it is a little jarring to be told that something that passed audit assessment uh, previously is now suddenly unacceptable. So according, accordingly, uh, it's our feeling, it's our conclusion that for uh, a lot of those organizations, uh, a few tweaks are really all that are going to be needed to meet the requirement in a, for, in a more effective manner. So what we're going to do is review an example of an interaction of processes, and we're going to improve it in two key ways. Um, now I'd like to note that this particular example 
is not reflective of any particular PJR client. It was created solely for the purpose of this presentation. Okay, so now we are looking at the raw interaction of processes uh, document. And you'll note that there are 12 uh, boxes on here and two decision diamonds. Now, are we to conclude that all 12 of these boxes represent a full process? Well, let's look at some of what we've got here. We have, for example, a step called order entered into mainframe system, second from the top left. Is that a full process by itself? We have inspection of products prior to shipment. Is that a full process uh, unto itself? Prioritize work orders at the production meeting. Same question, is that a full process by itself? And the answer to that is possibly, uh, but not definitely. So the first improvement that we're going to apply here is we're going to identify what are the support processes. Uh, now some of the uh, IOP documents that get rejected, they don't have a specific place to identify what those support processes are and how they interface. So what are we talking about when we refer to support processes? Well, we're referring to things like management review, uh, internal auditing, training, corrective action. Uh, these are things that you're required to do as part of an ISO 9001-2015 quality management system. So therefore, it's part of your uh, system and therefore it is part of your processes. Um, so uh, when these things are not accounted for, this can potentially be a concern. So let's see if we can uh, apply this first improvement. Okay, you'll note that now in the lower right-hand corner, uh, we have uh, the support processes block. And this is a disconnected block. The intent here is that these support processes uh, provide support to the rest of the quality management system. Uh, kind of equally to all other processes. Now the second step we're going to take here is to apply a key that's going to identify what the processes are. Now this is a very uh, popular strategy that we've seen. Uh, a lot of organizations will do this with numbering or alpha characters uh, we're actually going to go ahead and use color coding uh, to identify what the processes are. Now, what this enables us to do is it keeps the IOP as rendered. We've, we've not lost any of the work that was put into this, but we now have a way of knowing what the processes are. So let's make this further adjustment. Okay, so in the lower left-hand corner here, we can see that there are, in fact, six processes for this organization. There's sales order entry, highlighted in orange. We have purchasing in green, production in yellow, shipping in purchasing, and that happens to be a standalone item on the original IOP. We have a step, a process simply referred to as quality in red and then support in blue. So by these two small adjustments, we've kept the content of the IOP as was originally rendered, but we've accomplished two key things. We now know what the processes are and we have a representation of support activity. Uh, this is an IOP that is now ready for audit assessment. Now, obviously there's more than one way to accomplish this. Uh, over the many years that we have had a requirement for an interaction of processes, we've seen it done a number of ways. And we wanted to share uh, some additional ideas uh, and examples with you uh, if you are working on revising your IOP. Uh, now, all of the examples that we're going to be looking at today are taken from uh, either existing or former PJR clients. Permission was given in all cases for these examples to be shared. 
Here's our first example. You can see on the left hand side here, we've got another uh, kind of catch all for the support processes. And again, the idea is that this item provides support to the entire quality management system. And then we have kind of a top down flow. This is a very uh, atypical uh, set of processes here. The whole idea that it begins with contracts and finishes with shipping. Uh, this is absolutely an acceptable uh, interaction of processes representation. Here's another example, uh, kind of an interesting uh, idea here. Uh, what I especially like about this uh, item is the unique nature of the process names that are given. If you look, uh, especially kind of in the center here, there are some process names that you don't typically see, things like overhaul, inventory management. Um, it's clear that this organization went to some lengths to ensure that the uh, process names were truly uh, representative of what they do and, and therefore they can look at this and know precisely how it applies to them. Uh, obviously, we have a great deal of process to process interaction as well. For example, we can see that the shipping process uh, interfaces with both the quality and the work order receiving inspection process uh, and so forth. This is an interesting approach to defining an interaction of processes. This particular model is typically referred to as swim lane. Uh, you'll note in the left-hand portion of this IOP, uh, we actually have four named processes here. We have sales, purchasing, production, and support. Uh, but what they've done here with how this has been prepared is they've shown that purchasing and sales uh, to an extent, they kind of begin uh, independent of each other. Uh, they meet in the middle, so to speak, in the issuance of the work orders, which then uh, triggers production. Uh, but they are uh, accounting for the fact that purchasing and sales uh, do not trigger each other, at least not directly. Here's another possible approach. Again, uh, I chose this one uh, primarily because of the unique nature of the process names in some cases. You can see uh, service exchange is one of the given processes, distribution is one of the given processes. And you'll note what they've opted to do here is uh, yellow highlight what they refer to as their core processes. So everything else on this map here uh, kind of falls under the general heading of the support process. And in some cases, they are referring to uh, content of procedures as a representation of that activity. Now, in conclusion, we want to provide our clients with a value-added audit uh, while meeting all applicable requirements. It's certainly our hope uh, that you will use the points of this presentation to develop an even an even better understanding of what your processes are. And I do thank you for your time. Uh, at this time, we'll unlock the question portion of the dashboard and see if we have any questions today. Okay, well, thank you everyone. Have a great day.